Today on the newscast, an Iranian military and spy ship struck by an explosion as the shadow war between Iran and Israel at sea continues to heat up. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We've got a major breaking Middle East story for you today. An Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps mothership was struck by an explosion in the Red Sea. Israel was reportedly behind the attack as retaliation. We've got all the breaking details coming up for you in just one second. Before I get into it, I wanted to let you know that tomorrow... Thursday, April 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on our Watchmen YouTube channel, we will be holding our very first Watchmen YouTube live event. That's right. Come ready with your questions. We will have a Q&A. I will take your questions. I will also share some of my personal testimony and my background and how I came to do what I do here at the Watchmen. So be sure to tune in for this live chat Tomorrow, Thursday, April 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on our YouTube channel. I am really looking forward to continuing the conversation with you tomorrow live. Okay, let's get into today's big story, a major Middle East story. The shadow war between Iran and Israel continuing to heat up. We had the latest incident yesterday in the Red Sea, an Iranian ship called the Saviz which has been basically parked in the Red Sea off the coast of Yemen for the past few years, was struck by an explosion. There were no casualties. The ship did suffer some damage. No one was killed or hurt, according to Iranian authorities. They say that a mine caused this explosion aboard this Iranian ship. This is the latest in a series of attacks on Iranian and Israeli vessels Over the past two months, we have been bringing you all of the latest updates right here on the Watchman newscast. Okay, you might say it's cut and dry. The explosion went off yesterday. No one was hurt. It was a mine. But folks, it goes much deeper than that. Number one, what was this Iranian ship? The previous attacks were generally on cargo vessels, uh, not an actual military vessel. Well, the Saviz was no ordinary vessel, as I mentioned, parked in the Red Sea over the past few years, and some experts have referred to it as an Iranian mother ship. This was a military vessel, folks, a center for military and spying activity, and this ship was and is controlled by Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps. It is no coincidence that this ship has been parked in the Red Sea for the past few years, right off the coast of Yemen, the home base of the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. Now, this Iranian ship allegedly has been supplying intelligence, military, and logistical support to the Houthi rebels in Yemen. And one way they're doing it is, look, if a Saudi ship, for instance, passes through the Red Sea, the Saviz is giving the Houthis a heads up, and there you have maybe a cruise missile attack against shipping in the Red Sea, courtesy of the mother ship providing the needed information to its various proxies around the region. So this was no innocent fishing vessel in the Red Sea, to say the least. That's number one, just some background on that Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps mother ship, certainly up to no good in the Red Sea. That's number one. Number two, reportedly, uh, Israel shared with the United States, that they were going to conduct this attack. Uh, A U.S. official, as always, an unnamed U.S. official, shared with the media yesterday that Israel shared with the Biden administration that, hey, we're going to conduct this attack and we're going to do it as retaliation for repeated Iranian attacks against Israeli vessels over the past two months. Let's get into the background here. Uh, Let's back up to late February, the MV Helios Ray. Now, that's an Israeli-owned cargo ship. It was struck by an explosion that ripped three holes into its hull back in late February. It was in the Gulf of Oman. It was leaving the Middle East, uh, but struck by a mine or several mines, multiple mines, 
in the Gulf of Oman. Thankfully, no one was killed or injured. The ship did suffer some pretty serious damage, but it eventually went back out to sea. This happened near the coast of Iran. Hint, hint, no coincidence. Israel immediately said, look, this was clearly an attack carried out by the Iranian regime. It fit with Iran's MO over the past few years. In 2019, in particular, we saw several similar style attacks against including U.S. ships in the Persian Gulf region suffering these mine attacks courtesy of the Iranian regime. So it wasn't hard to point out who was behind that attack on the MV Helios Ray. That's number one. Number two, about two weeks ago, a missile was launched. Once again, in that Gulf of Oman area, a missile launched against an Israeli vessel at sea. Again, no one hurt, no casualties, but of course, damage to that Israeli vessel. So that's number one. That is Iran targeting Israeli shipping at sea, a very dangerous escalation. The second part to this is Israel's response and Israel targeting Iranian shipping. We had a very interesting report a few weeks ago. We talked about it here on the Watchman Newscast that over the past two years, since 2019, Israel has targeted at least 12, probably more by now, but at the time the article was published, at least 12 Iranian vessels uh, in the Red Sea, in the Mediterranean, that were on their way to Syria. Now, why would Israel do this? Well, because these Iranian vessels were transiting weapons and oil to their good buddies, their close allies in Syria, Israel, for very reasonable reasons, said, we don't want weapons, Iranian supplied weapons, going into the hands of Iran's proxies in Syria and elsewhere that will then be used against Israel. That's number one. Number two, we don't want the Iranian regime and their terror proxies like Hezbollah benefiting from the sale of oil throughout the region. So Israel has targeted these Iranian ships to prevent weapons and cash that would be used to kill Israelis from reaching the wrong hands. So it makes a lot of sense. But what we have now is what has traditionally been a land and air battle, and mostly through proxy, at least on Iran's end, between Israel and Iran over the past several years, is now moving more and more to sea. So the battlefield now, folks, is expanding in this shadow war between Israel and Iran. Israel and Iran actually had a strong relationship before 1979, before the current Iranian regime came to power and decided to make a central pillar of their strategic worldview and their ideology the destruction of the state of Israel. So starting in 1979, the tide completely changed, and Iran again made it a central goal of their regime to destroy the state of Israel. What would you do if you were Israel and the Iranian regime through proxy, whether it's Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, whether it's various proxies in Syria to Israel's northeast, whether it's Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza. Now we've got the Houthis in Yemen to the south, various Iranian-controlled Shia militias in Iraq to the east, forming a ring of fire around Israel quite literally, and at the same time, financing and arming proxy groups like Hamas and Hezbollah that kill Israeli men, women, and children. What would you do? if you were Israel. This is not a pick. This is not a fight that Israel picked. I'm sorry, but Israel now to defend their nation, a nation the size of the state of New Jersey, surrounded by mostly hostile powers, Israel is taking necessary steps to negate that Iranian threat. So don't give me the comments that Israel is the bully and the instigator. I'll read them and then I'll laugh as I lay out the facts for you about what is really going on. That had to be said. Hey, One last quick mention, the timing of this attack on the Iranian ship yesterday was very interesting because yesterday was the day where Iran and world powers came back to the table in Vienna, Austria, trying to find a way to re-engage the U.S. and Iran in that disastrous Iran nuclear deal. As we've told you here in the newscast many times, the Biden administration is hell-bent on re-entering that Iran nuclear deal. They are going to do it. They're going to try and do it, everything in their power to re-enter the deal. Iran is saying, okay, then drop all sanctions. 
It is the blackmail strategy by the Iranian regime saying to the United States, if you don't give us what we want, we're going to cause a whole lot of trouble in the Middle East and beyond. And oh, by the way, we will continue to target your troops who are stationed in Iraq with rocket attacks, courtesy of our proxies in that country. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said yesterday to the United States, hey, don't do this. This is a big mistake. He's been saying it now for years. And folks, I can tell you that Israel, under no circumstances, will allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. The shadow war at sea is only the beginning, what we've been talking about. If Iran is indeed ready to break out and possess the world's deadliest weapons, which they will use to fulfill their ideological goal of destroying the state of Israel, then Israel is going to act. I don't think that's a news flash for anyone, but just to remind you that the stakes are very high right now with these nuclear talks in Vienna. We will continue to keep a very close eye on this for you here at the Watchman Newscast. Hey, again, a quick reminder, tomorrow, don't miss it, Thursday, April 8th, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on our Watchman YouTube channel, our very first YouTube live event. I will be taking your questions about everything Ask me anything, I'll share my testimony, share how I got into this, my passion for the Middle East, and what comes next in the region. So be sure to have your questions and join us tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here. Until then, thanks for joining us today. God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.